of recording as of right now. So this meeting is being recorded, we're in the Zoom meeting, and it's also being streamed live on Facebook. So multiple ways to participate. So again, thank you for joining us for the Hill at Sims community meeting. We'll get started about 6.03 p.m. But while people are joining, we're gonna play a little video for y'all. that just joined. Thanks so much for joining us. We're playing a little video right now as people come into the meeting. We were on mute upon entry. Please keep yourself on mute, but feel free to say hi to us in the chat. We'll get started in just a little bit. As promised, we're going to get started uh, with the meeting. So if people join in late, um, the meeting is being recorded and is also on Facebook Live. So you can watch it over and over again. I'm Lisa Kasanovich, Outreach Manager with the Houston Parks Board. My co-host this evening is Lisa Griff, also with the Houston Parks Board. Thank you for joining Harris County Precinct 1 and our organization for this evening community meeting about the Hill at Sims. And so before we get started, um, there may be some Spanish speakers that are joining us. And so I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, uh, Christopher Montes, to let you know that he's in the chat um, to answer any questions in Spanish. Um, he can communicate back and forth with folks in Spanish in the chat. And then also he's going to let people know that um, we, we can have the presentation translated after the meeting in Spanish, if anyone's interested in that. So Christopher, I'll turn it over to you. Hola a todos, mi nombre es Christopher Montes. Soy el coordinador de eventos para Houston Parks Board. Este reunión no se ofrecerá en español. Si gustas um, cargar una cop copia en el español, mándanos un email electrónico. Gracias. Gracias, Christopher. You're welcome, Lisa. All right. So let's move on to the next slide where we can talk about the agenda for this evening and our meeting's goals. There we go. Okay, so first we'll do uh, an official uh, welcome from a special guest and uh, do introductions of who's working on this project. Um, we will also give you an overview of other projects that are going on in the area um, near Hill at Sims, as well as just give you some regional context um, for where Hill at Sims is located. Uh, we did a study um, in 2019. We'll give you a recap of that study. We'll then transition to talking about the current project at hand. And then we're going to do breakout groups. I know everyone loves those. Um, we definitely want to hear your feedback. We have a lot of great questions. Um, we will have facilitators for breakout rooms. You will be randomly shuffled into different rooms. And we do encourage your participation in those breakout rooms to you know, um, use the raise hand feature in Zoom to speak um, or unmute yourself if you have technical difficulties finding that raised hand feature. Um, you can also participate with us in the chat. 
Then um, after the breakout groups, we'll come back. I'll have the facilitators give a, a high level report of what each um, group discussed. And then uh, we'll talk about how you can help. Um, we really um, love the community's help and, and doing a couple things surrounding this project. So we um, sincerely appreciate your help. We'll go into talking about next steps and do an official thank you and send off. Uh, so the overall purpose, the reason why we're here tonight is to get your input on this future park at Hill at Sims. Really, really exciting. And so um, before we get started, though, we're going to deploy a couple, um, before we get into that agenda, I should say, going to deploy a couple Zoom questions, really, really easy Zoom questions we would like y'all to answer. So I'm going to launch that question right now. So the poll question should automatically appear on your screen. If it doesn't, um, you can feel free. I'll read the question aloud and you can type your answer in the chat. Um, so the question is, how did you hear about this meeting? Um, so you put whatever answer you want, uh, but um, we did a postcard mailer, a flyer, social media post, um, Precinct One did quite a few emails um, because they are the funder and leader of this project. Um, so they sent out some emails. Word of mouth, maybe you heard about it from someone else. Um, a robo call, did you get a call from someone about this um, meeting? The news, um, we did put out a little calendar about it to media outlets and then other. So again, right in the chat, um, we're really curious how you found out about this meeting. Um, it will help us um, you know, determine what we do for future meetings. And we're always um, available uh, to help y'all promote the meetings as well. And always happy to drop off flyers and posters. Um, so if you're interested in helping out with any of that in the future, please let us know that in the chat as well. You can be a promotional partner. All right, so that poll question has been open for about a minute, 17 seconds. I ended that poll, sharing the results really quickly before we go on to the next poll. Email from Precinct 1 was top ranking. Ooh, so yeah, Precinct 1 has a great email database list and their emails are colorful and fantastic. They did great graphics for this project. So um, glad y'all heard about it, um, primarily from the Precinct and then coming in second was the postcard mailer. So, so glad that um, that worked. So I'm gonna go ahead and deploy the second question. It's another easy one. Again, if it doesn't pop up on your screen, the question is, what is your zip code? What is your residential zip code? This helps us know how many people are in the meeting today that live um, near the Hill, Hill at Sims. And so, uh, or maybe you work near the Hill at Sims or play or pray. So um, we wanna know who you are. <laughs> so uh, let us know your zip code. I see people already in the chat. That's fantastic. We got zip codes representing 770-4151. 77025. Oh, hi, Tom Combson. So great, fantastic. Glad y'all are answering that. Um, so far in the Zoom poll, it's got a 77047 is winning. And I don't think I need to leave this one open as long because answering the question about your zip code is fairly easy. So I'm going to end that uh, poll question. Uh, like I said, 77047, majority of people from that zip code. And thanks for those also participating in the chat. So see, those were easy. And so I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next slide, which is introducing uh, Megan Palathra from Precinct One. So Megan, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Lisa. And hi everyone, my name is Megan Palathra. I'm the project coordinator for Precinct One on this project. And we are really excited for our team to provide an update on this exciting project after we wrapped up the study last year. Uh, we're also excited to hear from you tonight. So um, we just uh, excited to hear your thoughts on this process and this project. So thank you so much for being here. Um, I know everybody's got busy schedules, but we're really excited to, to hear what you have to say and to uh, share, these, share these updates. I'm joined tonight by other Precinct One staff, um, including Community Engagement Coordinator Aditi Yang, who you may be familiar with already uh, from community events, civic club meetings, or just general precinct one outreach in the area. So Aditi Young, I'll open it up to you for a few words. Thank you, Megan. Um, good evening, everyone. Again, my name is Aditi Young Obolt, and I am the 
community engagement coordinator for this area. Um, really excited for some of the things that are happening and some of the, the updates that we have to give you all and also to hear you all's feedback because the Hill at Sims is actually for you all. So we wanna hear exactly what you all wanna do with it and how you all wanna be involved. Um, and I'll post in here um, the link to the actual study and some of the updates as well. Um, also wanna send out a reminder that um, the My Home Is Here survey is still open. Um, this is the last day to actually do it. Um, if you fill it out, you get um, a chance to get one of the items of a 30 minute bike ride with B-Cycle, kitchen toolkit, coloring book and colored pencils or My Home Is Here kite. So please make sure you fill it out and I will put that in the chat as well. And that's all I have. Thanks, Adidiyong. And it is our great pleasure to bring a special message and welcome from Harris County Commissioner Rodney Ellis, who is the visionary for this project, who mm -hmm. wants to um, share some of the Precinct One's vision for parks and green space and kind of give an overview of the initial pro uh, improvements for the Hill at Sims project. Hi, I'm Rodney Ellis. Every Harris County resident deserves easy access to green spaces. Beautiful parks and green spaces can help reduce flooding, improve the quality of life, and just make us in a better mood. They improve community health, help build social connections. I think we're supposed to be seeing his face, correct? Ah, I can't get it. There we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Unfortunately, not all neighborhoods and communities in Harris County have the same access to quality green spaces. Precinct oh, wow. committed to enhancing green space equitably, focusing on neighborhoods mm -hmm. that have been historically neglected. Mm -hmm. Neighborhoods like Sunnyside, where I grew up, and where Precinct One and our partners, including the Houston Parks Board, are addressing the situation by transforming the Hill and Sam's Detention Basin into a regional park destination that will include a nature preserve and much more. And we need your input by participating in this and future community meetings that are designed for you to tell us what you want in your part. Mm -hmm. Input from you and your neighbors is vitally important. So be a part of this process to make something happen in your neighborhood and make it a neighborhood you can be proud of and you can enjoy. This is your part. We're committed to acting transparently and working together with community stakeholders to ensure that this project meets the surrounding neighborhoods goals and aspirations. The initial phase focuses on creating site connections that open public access to the park. This includes a 10 foot wide concrete shared use path around the basin and on the property frontage at Scott Street. A four foot wide nature path, parkway, gateways, water access and improved pedestrian crossing at Scott Street pedestrian bridge across Sims Bayou being concurrently developed by Precinct One to help link communities safely to the park and promote active recreation and transportation. Precinct One's goal is to create more enriching community experiences, expand access to healthy recreational opportunities, open equitable economic opportunities, foster uh, environmental resiliency, and bring communities together. Thanks for participating in this community meeting and stay tuned for other things to come. Awesome. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, I mean, at least, we, no, I mean, we, we sincerely um, appreciate the, yes, yes, thank you, Eddie. Yes, Club. <laughs> um, we sincerely appreciate the commissioner making time to, um, to, make that special video for us and uh, stress the importance of this project. We really do appreciate his visionary leadership and uh, guiding this to be a park for the surrounding, a great park for the surrounding community. So it's great. His message is heard loud and clear. All right. So moving on to um, talking a little bit more about the people who are working on this project. Um, and here in the background is a beautiful aerial of the Hill at Sims also in our backgrounds as well. And so um, as you see, Sims Bayou is there uh, in the forefront and Clover Lake, Clover and Park is there in the background. 
uh, but on the left hand side of the screen lists out uh, our projects teams and funding partners. So of course, as I mentioned at the beginning of this meeting, but for those who, of you who joined later, um, Houston, I'm with Houston, Lisa Kasanovich with Houston Parks Board, co-host is Lisa Griff, also with the Houston Parks Board. We are the project manager. Um, the project team also includes half associates and SWA group. And you'll hear from um, them later on this evening. Uh, we'll also have an update on um, the Sims Bayou Greenway Hike and Bike Bridge. And so um, we have Harris County Engineering with us, Aguirre uh, Field and Fields, and of course, again, SWA Group <laughs> working on, on that particular project. Uh, funding um, for Hill at Sims is provided by a Texas Parks and Wildlife Department grant, which was secured by Representative Alma Allen and the Harris County De Delegation. So speaking of the representative at this time, I did wanna see if we do have any elected officials um, or staff of elected officials with us. If so, uh, feel free to either unmute yourself or um, introduce yourself in the chat. We'd love to know if there's other elected officials here. So I will give a moment of silence. Okay, great. If there's anyone here with the elected officials office or elected official, but you can't unmute yourself, again, feel free to type in the chat that you're here with us. Um, oh, Desmond, hi, you're here with the council member. Um, Evans should Carolyn Evans Shabazz office right so thank you so much for joining us. All right, and then we also want to hear from community members as well, um, so if you're representing a civic club super neighborhood. Um, or you just want to let us know who you are and that you're in attendance, please uh, type that in the chat as well, we want to hear from you, I know I saw Charles Caven here I know I saw him from Crestmont civic club so um, so I know y'all are here so feel free to say hi in the in the chat. All right, so moving on to giving a description of um, the Hill at Sims and the greater regional context, the little red star you see on the screen is the Hill at Sims site. It sits along Sims Bayou Greenway, which is one of a um, number of waterways in our region, one of nine major waterways. So it kind of sits right, you know, not exactly in the middle of Sims, but you know, just um, east of 288. And the images you see on the left, um, the top kind of gives you um, the, the area contacts with 288 and where Airport Boulevard is and Scott Street. Maybe some people that are attending this meeting um, never heard of the Hill at Sims or even been there. So this will help you get acquainted with the, um, with the site. And so next slide will show um, kind of a closer up image of Hill at Sims sitting along Sims Bayou. And so right there in the highlighter green section where it's called out the hill. Thank you, Lisa G, my Vanna White. The Hill at Sims um, is right there along uh, Sims Bayou. And um, Sims Bayou actually is going to be connected by a series of linear parks and trails uh, through Houston Parks Board's Bayou Greenways 2020 project. So I know some of y'all in the room have heard of this, some may have not, uh, but Bayou Greenways 2020 is an initiative to connect 150 miles of trails along our nine major waterways, Sims Bayou being one of them. And so um, a lot of um, trails along Sims have already been built or repaved to be brought up to a 10 foot wide concrete trail standard. We still have a few projects lingering, but at the end of the day, over 20 miles of trails will be connected along this bayou, along with um, about 10 city parks, as well as other facilities like Hope Farms and Houston Botanic Garden. So um, Hillet Sims will sit along a network of other parks. So it's really exciting. All right, and so next I'm going to turn it over to my colleague Matt with SWA. He can introduce himself and give um, uh, context for other projects that are happening near Hill at Sims. So Matt, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Lisa. Um, really happy to be here with everybody tonight. Um, as Lisa mentioned, we have been involved with this project early on in the planning study as well as the bridge project. Um, and so had done some earlier engagement as well, and I think you know, as we zoom into the site here, a few things that have been identified that are sort of key influences in the area. I know Commissioner Ellis talked a lot about the connections and, and kind of linking this all together. So the, the slide that we're looking at here identifies kind of some of the really exciting things that are happening within the area right now. 
kind of working my way from the, the top to the bottom here. Um, and actually, let me step back for a second. So this is obviously a working diagram. So we really welcome everybody's input. If you're seeing things that are missing, please let us know. Um, this is what we've heard to date um, as far as what's happening in the area. So working from the top, um, sort of the Turs County Metro Heritage Green, you can see that's on the, the top there just above the yellow line. Um, and just below that Sunnyside Solar Farm. So there's a couple of things at the north that are being linked to our, poten our potential site by the Scott Street Corridor. And we'll get a lot into the, the Scott Street Corridor in a little bit here and about some of the improvements that are gonna be happening on the site. Um, so working a little further down, Lisa just mentioned the Sims Bayou Greenway um, and the completion date for that. So we're really excited about kind of the regional linkage there and the opportunities um, along that corridor and adjacent to the site as well. Um, the commissioner had mentioned the Sims Bayou Bridge. We'll get into that a little bit more. I know the, the precinct is gonna talk about that specific project in more detail. Um, the site that we're gonna spend quite a bit of time on today, the Hill at Sims initial improvements, we'll get you more details on that as well. Um, the kind of blue green box there, West Orem expansion. I think this is an important infrastructure project that's going to be happening coming from 288. West Orem is gonna connect across the site. Um, that does change some of the connection dynamics for the site as well. And then further on down to the South, you can see the uh, Christia Adair stormwater detention basin. Um, so there are some stormwater improvements there and they are adjacent to the, the Tom Bass Regional Park. And so, Looking at that Scott Street corridor, we recognize there's some really important north-south connections and exciting things that are happening there. Um, not to be left out, uh, we also are showing the MLK bikeway um, to the east there as well. We're very cognizant of kind of alternate transit um, options of getting through this area, getting this region, and really pushing the idea of, of kind of bikeways and multi-use um, as well. So the, the next slide here, we wanted to zoom in a little bit further and, and talk about the initial planning study that we had done. Um, this had started in 2019, um, kind of focusing on the, the kind of broader site here. Um, a couple of key things I think that are worth noting, we talked about that Scott Street connection. Right now, our project site of interest is about a mile long um, from the north to the south end of the site. Um, the Bayou Greenway, connection that comes through here. Also uh, very similar, about a mile of trail that is fronting um, this project site as well. Um, you can see there's in the middle there, the basin perimeter. Um, we've Commissioner Ellis had talked about the loop trail on the site. It's about a mile and a half going around the, the hill at Sims. And we feel like that's a really important component to the site. Um, you can see here in green, there are some adjacent parks that are really important to connect to as well. Been a lot of discussion um, at the previous public meetings about Clover and Park connecting into the basin. Um, Margaret Jenkins will be connected by the Bayou Greenway. And then the city of Houston Sports Park is not too far either. So um, Lisa, I think poll question number three is coming up if you wanna take that. Yes, correct. And, and I also thank you so much for mentioning the ongoing construction project of Sims Bayou Greenway. I failed to mention that earlier that we are in construction on Sims Bayou Greenway between Buffalo Speedway and Scott Street. Um, and that project will be done in April 2022. So just wanted to make a quick mention of that. Yes, I will deploy the next question, question three, and it's a two-parter. Um, I'll leave this up for probably only about 45 seconds. Um, we're gonna be cognizant of time. And so um, the question is, have you visited the hill at Sims? And then the follow-up question is why or why not? And um, so, no right or wrong answer. And so um, again, for those who are answering um, questions in the chat, uh, have you visited the Hilton's Why or Why Not? Some of the answers are to participate in Nature Heritage Society's monthly walks. We appreciate them activating the site and doing their walks there. It's fantastic. Uh, maybe you explore the site on your own. Perhaps you didn't know it existed. You don't know really how to access it, where to park, just not interested, or there's another reason, um, which you can write in the chat. So um, please go ahead and do that. All right. And so, all right. So answers have kind of dropped off at this point. And so I'm going to go ahead and end that polling and share the results. 
And so um, have you held, visited Hilton's? No, but that's perfectly fine because you know the whole purpose is to turn this into a park where you can visit. And um, majority of people said did not know it existed. So I hope you're learning some stuff tonight. And I see people in the chat saying that um, Tom Constant said commissioner took them on a ride there um, with our board member, Michael Skelly, a few years ago. So that's pretty cool. All right, moving on. Okay, so the next slide here, um, so the zoning diagram, we wanted to break the site out into um, kind of character study, if you will, the different component parts that we looked at in the last slide. Um, a couple themes that came out of the, the community outreach previously um, kind of influenced the way that the site was thought about in the early planning study. And so looking at the map here, kind of the, the, the different color-coded areas you're seeing, there was really a lot of um, feedback given about how natural the site is and sort of preserving that natural character. And so you can see in the top there, um, on the left, there is a Houston Parks Board site um, that is a potential prairie restoration. There's also a forest there. And so that was really viewed as an important natural connection. Um, to the right there, the, the second green area, that is the, the Hill at Sims area that we've been talking about with the trail. The hill is an incredible place. Um, you know, if you haven't gotten there, we it is open, you can see it. I think it's hard to describe um, this site without being there. We have the beautiful photo in the background here, but it's a really amazing place from an, a natural perspective, um, getting outdoors and sort of quality of life components. Um, so then looking to the south, you're gonna see an active recre use, recreational use area. So there's been a series of um, uh, feedback talking about maybe more active uses. We're not talking crazy active, there was um, the idea of doing some mountain biking. There's another hill down there talking about a general use space. And we'll get into that in a second, but that was maybe a little less nature, um, a little bit more active, but really the essence of the site is about nature and engaging in that. So if you wanna to go to the next one. Um, so a few themes um, from the community input to date um, there was a series of meetings um, starting in October 2019, um, kind of ending in February 2020. We tried to gather up everything we heard and put it in one slide. Hard to do, um, but we did get a few themes that came out of those discussions. And so, um, you know, the first thing, connectivity here, people really wanted to understand how to connect, how to get there. Are they coming on their bike? Um, the improvements along the Scott Street corridor, bus lines. Um, it, connection was really important to the site, whether it be by trail or alternative transportation. Uh, once you get there, can you park a car? Um, those are all things we're studying. Second was safety. Um, I know a lot of people express the idea of if you're coming to the park, you wanna be able to feel safe. Um, so that was a high priority as well as safety. Really, we talk about nature. We wanna preserve that identity with nature and protect it as well. So we identified that as a, a safety element too. Nature talked a lot about that, fishing piers, the idea of camping, um, kind of nature playgrounds, maybe a small boat launch, bird watching, uh, nature center, a lot of themes about how you best engage nature from the community. Um, then you're looking, the next one, passive in, in purple there. Um, there was a lot of feedback about keeping it relatively passive. Um, you know, we're not talking about soccer fields and baseball fields necessarily. There wanted to be a lot of flexible use, maybe pavilions, picnic areas, kind of an education component as well. So that's kind of the idea of passive. And then active, maybe a few more people in some of these areas, the idea of a temporary amphitheater where you can come and go, maybe a community garden, again, very different than field sports, but still an active use. Uh, temporary events, maybe small, smaller events, maybe you can use the hill in a way to engage people with the site. Um, and so that was a lot of the feedback that we had, had gotten initially. Um, so the framework diagram here, I'm not going to get into a great level of detail on this one. Um, all of this presentation is going to be available online. And so you can kind of look at the legend, pick apart each thing, see what you're most interested in. Um, you know, we talked about the, the general zones here. Um, so I think I'm just going to leave this one up to, to people to, to look at if they download it otherwise. Um, Ashley from HALF is going to get into some of the details of the initial improvements as well. For, so for the sake of time, I think maybe we move to the next poll question number four here. Yeah, great. And as people answer the poll question, they can look a little more in depth at the map. So 
I am deploying um, the last poll question. Um, and then everyone remember, we got breakout rooms coming up. Uh, so the poll question uh, for people that um, are participating via chat, it says, did you participate in the Hellitson's planning study? Uh, select all that apply. Did you, yes, I answered a survey. Yes, I went to a meeting about it. Yes, I attended a Hill at Sim site walk um, with Nature Heritage Society. Yes, no, I did not hear about it. Um, no, but I'm excited to now or other right in the chat. And so um, basically, uh, you know, we wanna know, did you engage with us um, whenever we were doing the study, which the study phase takes place pre-project. Um, so we wanna know if you participated with us during that phase. Like I said, like we said, there was a community meeting in 2019 and a survey. So um, we wanna know if you participated. And if not, no worries, we're glad you're here with us this evening. So I'm gonna go ahead and end that poll and share the result. Um, we got, no, you didn't participate, which is which is great. We're glad, we're glad you're here this evening. And for those who did participate, thank you for taking your time to fill out that survey, um, attend that meeting or go to a site walk. So, Either way, we're glad to have you uh, this evening. All right. So next, we're going to turn it over to Ashley um, to do a few slides about the um, initial improvements. So Ashley, turning it over to you. All right. So this is the initial improvements phase, which is what we're currently working on the design for, and it's going to focus on the connectivity and the safety for the site itself. It's not going to focus on a lot of amenities for this phase. And so starting out, we've got the concurrent bridge connection project, which uh, we will hear more about in a minute. And then we've got the North Loop Trail, which is going to loop the entire detention pond. And that'll be a concrete trail. And then we've got a nature trail up in the north site that is going to be a four foot wide trail that will weave in between the existing trees. And we have a Scott Street connector trail that's going to go all the way from Kip Sunnyside High School down along Scott Street and it'll end at the Martin Luther King Health Center. And then we're going to have improved crossings at the Martin Luther uh, King Health Center and the Cloverland Park connections. And then we'll have a hilltop security um, and investigation, which that's going to be more about the existing hill. We need to make sure that it's safe for the site. There will be two water access areas. And then there'll be signage that are site specific to show you how to navigate the site itself. And then just a general overview of our schedule. We're looking at completing design at the end of this year and beginning bidding at the beginning of next year. And the construction for this is anticipated to be at the beginning of 2023 is the finish date. There will be two more community meetings coming up in July and October of this year as we continue through the design process. Now we're gonna move on to talk about the amenities themselves and we are gonna introduce Dan uh, with Harris County Engineering who will tell us about the bridge. Hello everyone, my name is Dan Damatrish and I am the project manager for Harris County Engineering on the Sims Bayou Pedestrian Bridge project. Um, as you can see, it's a pretty exciting project. Um, instead of your typical standard bridge across the bayou, um, we have something a little bit more, with some nice interesting features as you can see in the photo in the top top center of the, of the slide, that there will be a cantilever section that will allow for a beautiful overlook of the um, the entire uh, detention basin and surrounding area. It's one of those great photo shots that's going to be fantastic for the community to just, you know, something that is, you know, a remarkable landmark for everybody. Um, and again, right now we're currently in design for this project. Um, we're anticipating that the design of this bridge will be completed in August of 2022. 
Um, you know, project will then go out for bid for contractors and we expect that to be complete by about in November, 2022. And that construction will be fully complete in October, or sorry, Q3 of 2023. And then in the next slide here, we have some more renderings just to show what the bridge is gonna look like. Again, we're, we're just starting our design process. So again, there may be some minor changes throughout the design process, but this gives you a general indication of what the bridge will look like something something along these lines and of course there will be um you know there will be full integration with the uh, trail projects that the houston parks board is putting on right now all right thank you lisa hey thanks dan and so now i'm gonna talk about some of the amenities that will be in uh the initial improvement space for the hill at sims so the first one is access and that is what ashley talked about the access across scott street to cloverland park and to mlk clinic at the south and the north sides of the site and currently that is planned to be um, signage and crossing crosswalk striping uh, so that it's easier for cars to know that there's a crossing there and to make it safer for pedestrians uh, and bicyclists. We'll also have two parking areas. Uh, so at that across from Cloverland Park, that's kind of what we look at as the main entrance. And so parking areas that flank that, and we're looking at using uh, permeable type surfaces for those parking areas and also looking at using swales to handle the runoff in a beautiful and um, practical way. Then all along Scott Street, we would have a side path, which is really a wide path adjacent to the road with some buffer between it and the road. So you can see in the images there and um, potentially some landscaping along that. So it provides a nicer uh, way for people to move up and down Scott Street. And then we will be coordinating that with Metro and their boost corridor along Scott Street, which will mean upgraded Metro bus stations. Then the nature trail and the detention basin trail. So some images of what those might look like. So the nature trail that weaves up in the north here and then the trail around the basin, which is the 10 foot wide concrete trail that Ashley talked about that is easy for everyone to navigate, whether they uh, walk, bike, or stroll. Then we also heard from the community that they really like the fact that the water is there and would like water access. And we know people already go there to do some fishing. And so we're looking at a couple of points where we can get water access for the community and some ideas of what that might look like. Although we are also very early on in the design, so have not started that. Um, and then amenities, so things along the trail like signage and bench benches and trash cans and um, educational signage that will be designed in throughout the uh, pathway. And then the other thing that we're doing on the top of the hill is looking at geotech. So really the hill was built from uh, when Harris County Flood Control dug out these detention basins and they piled up the dirt on the hill. And so we really need to test that to see how stable it is to see what we can actually do so that we can really take advantage of the views from the top of that beautiful hill. So now it's time for the breakout group. So Lisa Kay, do you wanna let everyone know what's going on? Yes, definitely. Um, as I mentioned before, we're going to go into breakout groups. We do want to hear your input on what we've presented. Um, and we also do have questions that facilitators will pose. And so um, I'll be breaking everyone out into five uh, breakout rooms. You will have 20 minutes um, within that breakout room. And one minute uh, prior to the um, breakout room, um, one minute prior to the breakout room closing, you will get a notification um, that the, the breakout room is closing and you'll come back to the meeting. And I think just Lisa G, since we're short on time, maybe we'll um, just have you, <laughs> Bon telling you, we're gonna have you report out from, from your group some of, some of your answers, if that's fine. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, let's see, there we go.
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open all rooms. So you should get a message on your screen asking you to go into that room. So again, please make sure you go ahead and go into your breakout room, please. You should be joining now two rooms. And so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen for those who are left in the meeting or are joining us on Facebook Live. So again, please go into that breakout room. There you go. Nellie, I see you're back in the room. You're on mute, Nellie. Oh, yes, I got doubled up with Lisa G. So I, if, if, we're, if we're good on facilitators or I can, I can join another group. Hold on one second. We've got Matt in one room. Okay, we've got Lisa G in one room. We've got, oh, I see room three doesn't have a facilitator. So um, yes, let's see. Yes, so I have to um, move you. Nellie. I'm trying to figure out how to physically move you. Is there an option for you to go back in a room? Uh, let's see, breakout rooms. Oh, I think I can join room three if that's where I'm supposed to go. Yeah, that's where you're supposed to go. Okay, I'm gonna try and join that. So if okay, not, thank I'll you. Okay. Okay, great. I think she left. Okay, so we're in breakout rooms right now. So room five, we have Marco Barbier. Room four, we have Ashley. Okay, let's see. Room two, we have Lisa G. And room one, okay, we have Matt. Okay, I think it worked out. We are live on Facebook. Again, for those who are joining us uh, for the next 20 minutes or so, um, people are in breakout rooms um, discussing questions that facilitators are posing. Uh, so we appreciate your patience with uh, uh, waiting for us to return. And so um, just sit tight, maybe take a, take a break and um, you know, we feel free to provide comments on the Facebook feed. Um, Christopher, maybe you can take a look at the Facebook feed. Are you able to look at that? Yes, I could take a look at the Facebook yeah, feed. Yeah, maybe take a look at the Facebook feed and see if anyone's giving comments and you can let me know and then maybe I can answer any comments or questions on the Facebook feed. Again, for those on Facebook where people are in breakout rooms right now. So people are answering questions from their facilitators in breakout rooms. And so we have just a slide up here talking about and showing um, the Hill at Sim sites and the initial improvements that we're doing. And as you see, the scope of work is listed here um, that mentions trails. Cross, uh, improvements to crosswalks, gateway, um, and you know analysis of the actual hill at Sims site, the hill itself in the hill at Sims, and making sure that's secure and safe, um, signage, uh, water access to do water activities at the site, um, and like a nature trail more for like just walking and being immersed in nature. It is a beautiful site. Um, so this slide shows those initial improvements. Chris, any comments or questions on the Facebook feed? We have no questions on the Facebook okay. feed. Okay, great. Thank you so much. You're welcome.
Yeah. Again, for those on watching us on Facebook, people are in breakout rooms right now. And so thank you for uh, joining us. It's gonna be a little bit quiet until they're having coming back. <laughs> this is very fun to lead this <laughs> for the Facebook audience while people are in the breakout rooms. Um, but, you know, I probably could pose some questions um, to people on Facebook as well. I mean, y'all deserve to get the questions too, right? And so at least if you watch this recording back and it's full length, you can say that you were asked to participate. Um, so some of the questions that we're asking in the breakout rooms right now are, we want to know, do you currently use nearby parks, trails, and green spaces like Sims Bayou Greenway, Cloverland Park, and other area parks? Um, if so, what do you like about them? What do you not like about them? So that's one of our questions is asking if you use nearby parks. We know some people do drive to get to other parks. Um, and so if that's fine too, if you drive to other area parks, um, other parks outside of your neighborhood, uh, but no worries at all. We want to know that as well. We also want to know what you like about those parks, what makes you go and drive to that particular park rather than going to one in your neighborhood. Another question we're asking in the breakout rooms is, uh, do you currently go somewhere to be in nature? If so, where? If not, why not? I'm not a, as everyone as you think is comfortable going, um, being immersed in nature. Sometimes it's a scary experience. There are organizations out there um, like Nature and Eclectic Outdoors. Um, they're a fantastic nonprofit that introduces kiddos and their families um, to like camping and activities in nature because uh, it's not always apparent what to do and not all people feel comfortable. And so that's why we ask that question, do you currently go somewhere to be in nature? Why or why not? Um, we, we would love to know that as well. We can help, uh, can help us um, better design the site. Um, and then we also ask are asking people what you think about the potential improvements to the site. And so um, those are listed on the screen, as you see, I went through those just a little bit ago, so no need to repeat myself. Um, but of those amenities listed on the screen, those initial improvements, what do you think, um, you know, what do you think about them? Uh, and so do you like one more so than, any, than the other? Um, we also want to know if there's any changes you would make. And so if there's, um, if you don't agree with something on this slide about the initial improvements or you see something that's missing, uh, we would also want to know that. We, the ultimate goal for this project is to best serve the surrounding community. We know people might, you know, come into the community from other communities to experience it, but um, we really want it to best serve the adjacent and nearby um, communities. So we want to know that as well. And um, I forgot to mention that the red marking on the screen is the proposed, is a proposed um, hike and bike trail bridge across uh, Sims Bayou so that communities you know, communities on the north side up here, I think this is Sugar Valley or Sugar Hill, I can't quite remember, um, neighborhood uh, can, you know, access the park, um, access the new park, and people can go back and forth and also experience the Sims Bayou Greenway um, with the Houston Parks Board, and we're leading a project um, to create a linear hike and bike trail along Sims Bayou, as you see here in the dark gray. And so that bridge will help people get from the Greenway um, to the future Harris County Precinct One Park, as well as connect the neighborhoods. And so again, um, we wanna know, what do you think about those proposed initial improvements um, and that there's any changes you would like. Um, we also wanna know, another question we're asking people is how can the project best serve the surrounding community? So in the, the people in the breakout rooms right now are answering that question, how can it, help people lead healthier lives. And so um, uh, we wanna know how this can best serve y'all. I've said that, so let us know that um, also. And then we are also interested in what other people we can partner with. Um, and it's not just about Harris County Precinct One or you know Houston Parks Board, it's about y'all, the people who will use it and the people who will maybe partner up to activate and program it. Um, so are there any community groups, businesses, artists, musicians, um, et cetera, that you think would be interested in this site and somehow playing a role. You know, one day we'll get to construction, we'll get to people using the site and we'll wanna, you know, do some programming and activating. And so um, we'd love to know who those, who those people are. Um, 
So, so please uh, type in the chat. Let us know that as well. Um, in the uh, please let us know that in the uh, in the uh, let's see. Oh, sorry. In the Facebook chat. That's what I meant. Please let us know in the Facebook chat. Okie dokie. Um, and then the another question we want to know is what are some educational um, components that could be included. So obviously this is going to be a really, really nice park. We don't want to miss the education opportunities that are present. Um, you know, as y'all, as you see to the north, we have Kip Sunnyside High School. Um, we have, you know, some community centers nearby and community parks with after school and recreation programs, um, as well as other schools in the area. So this site can definitely be used for education. And um, maybe there's some teachers looking to do, you know, and take, take their students here and do environmental ed classes um, at the site, um, or they have ideas of what to do to educate people when they get to the site. And that's another thing, we mentioned signage here in the slide. And so we um, also, not only do we want to, you know, program it whenever it's complete and have an educational component, but the signage itself can also be an educational component. So maybe you let us know what you would like that to feature, what educational components. Maybe it's about um, water quality or natural filtration process or native plants, the importance of native plantings or the importance of a detention basin itself. Just as a reminder, this is a Harris County flood control district detention basin that's being turned into a park. Um, so it's really exciting that detention and parks can go hand in hand, um, of course, and when they're designed well. And so, um, you know, we, we've got uh, educational opportunities that are abundant. Um, so that's another question we're there discussing in the breakout rooms. Um, we want to know how else the community can be involved in this project as well. I asked earlier for names of community groups, artists, musicians, anyone you think want to be involved, but what would they like to do? Um, what types of events do you think this site could hold? Um, volunteer opportunities, meetings. I'm a big fan of outdoor meetings, um, sitting in a, you know, a square room with a projector screen. It's nice, I know it's traditional, but it'd be nice to just, you know, um, do meetings outside. So maybe the site can be used, um, you know, for meetings out, outside. And so, um, you know, that site could be used for that. And um, people in the breakout rooms are also discussing um, if they'd be, they were asking people if they would be interested in joining a focus group. So in your breakout, in the breakout rooms people are in, um, we might, um, we might uh, set up some focus groups after this where they discuss particular topics, maybe dive deep into some of these initial improvements. Uh, or maybe it's just discuss potential events and programming and partner future partnerships. Um, so each focus group would tackle a different topic. And so um, let us know if you're interested in participating in a future focus group. Um, we'd, we'd love to do that. We'd love to have you participate. And maybe you know someone else who wasn't able to attend tonight that would like to participate. Um, but definitely let us know. It's just it's not just this one meeting once and done. Um, you know, it's a, it's a continued relationship throughout the entire span of the project and thereafter. Um, another question that, um, that they're asking in the focus groups right now is, would you be interested in joining a Friends of the Hill group? And so I really like that term. Um, and if you don't know what a Friends of group is, um, they can help ensure the community is represented in the design process, um, advocate for additional changes, promote stewardship, um, long-term stewardship of the site, care for the site, um, and create activities to en en engage people. So that's kind of what, I know that sounds a lot, but like a lot, but that's what we define um, as a friends of group. And so we're interested if um, people would like to participate for the long-term, you know, with a collective group of your peers that are all interested in the success of the site. Um, so we're also asking people if they'd want to do, you know, create a, a friends of group. And Houston Parks Board uh, frequently works with those friends groups, um, um, you know, on, on projects. And so those, that was the long list of questions. I think that I went through 12 questions. That was, those are the 12 questions 
that are being asked in the breakout room. So if you're participating in this meeting on Facebook Live, we um, apologize that you had to listen to me for the past 20 minutes, <laughs> um, actually 15 minutes. Uh, the breakout rooms uh, do have five minutes left, uh, but we do appreciate you bearing with us. And if you're going to be watching this recording in the future, just if you want to skip over this. <laughs> no, I did ask some great questions, um, 12 questions to be exact, um, which are being discussed in the breakout rooms. Following this meeting, we will be posting all of this online on the Hill at Sims uh, project webpage. Precinct One does have a fantastic webpage that describes this project. We've posted it a few times in the chat. Chris, maybe you want to post a link to the Hill at Sims. Uh, maybe you want to grab that from the Zoom chat and put it in the Facebook chat. Um, if you wouldn't mind, if it's already there in the description, then no need. <laughs> but they do, Precinct One does, were you going to say something? I will do. I'll, okay. I'll grab it and put it in the Facebook. Great. Thank you so much. And then, um, so what I was saying is that on that Precinct One webpage, we will post a recording of this meeting and uh, also a description of the meeting summary. So we'll kind of summarize all the comments received this evening, what we presented, do like a one to two page brief high level summary and put it on that web page as well, along with a PDF of this presentation. Now, if you're interested in learning more, maybe you're the leader of a civic organization group club, um, that didn't get the opportunity to participate in tonight and you're watching this after the meeting, um, we're happy to meet with you one-on-one -on -one or individually or, um, you know, to, to speak with you further about this particular project if you'd like more specifics. But that um, Precinct One project webpage that Chris, my colleague Christopher is posting in the Facebook chat, um, that does give a lot of great background information on the site. And as I mentioned, the meeting summary a PDF of the presentation and um, the recording will all be on there. And of course, this Facebook Live event continues to live on. And so um, we appreciate any sharing you can do about this site. The more input, the better. Um, we will have two additional community meetings after this. Um, so I'm not exactly sure on the dates yet. I think that's determined uh, by the project schedule, but. Um, Houston Parks Board, uh, my organization will be working closely with Harris County Precinct 1 to set the dates for those subsequent meetings. Um, don't know if they'll be in person or virtual, It'll probably be virtual. Um, a lot of people are interested in this, but we want to keep people safe. And so um, we'll definitely put out communications about those future meetings to the public through Harris County Precinct 1's email blast, social media, uh, news releases to the media, um, and then for this particular meeting, we did send out, um, I believe the precinct sent out thousands of postcards to the nearby residents so they are aware of what's going on. They of course deserve first and foremost to know since they live um, next to the facility, next to the detention facility. Um, my colleague Christopher also went out in the community and um, distributed flyers uh, to the schools and community centers. And um, we got a great number of people that registered and participated this evening. We're really happy with the turnout. So um, sometimes nothing substitutes in-person outreach. Uh, so don't worry um, if you couldn't fully participate this evening in the Zoom meeting, which we're operating now, and you're seeing it through Facebook Live, um, you will be able to participate in those two meetings in the future, and you'll hopefully know about it. Uh, but share your contact information with us as well. We are definitely building a database for this project and uh, an email database. And so if you want to um, be notified about uh, future phases of the project, you know, there's a whole design process before we get, we're in it right now, before it gets to construction, definitely send us your contact information so we know who you are and that you want to be on the email list. Um, I appreciate, we appreciate it. Uh, we're trying to get thousands of people on that on that email database. And so I can just imagine how the groundbreaking and ribbon cutting will be. Oh, it will be fantastic. Um, so again, please um, stay up to date with us through that link that Chris gave you. I think you can also um, sign up for, on that website, you can sign up for email blast from, the, from Harris County Precinct 1. And so that way you can stay up to date. 
there's just a few seconds um, before the breakout rooms close. We spent 20 minutes together. Thank you so much for listening to the Lisa K show. <laughs> <laughs> William Taylor, Precinct One, let me know. Um, I appreciate you bearing with us. People are going to start coming back into the meeting room now, um, to the main room. So again, thank you for being with me. We appreciate it. Thank you for watching the Facebook event. Um, please keep stay tuned. Um, we're we've got we're going to have a report back from the breakout rooms, and then we're going to. Um, then we're going to close it up and let you know how you can participate uh, moving forward. So thank you again. And participants have about 60 seconds to come back into the room. So people are coming back in now or they're finishing up their conversation. So hopefully it went really, really well and can't wait to hear the report back from my co-host Lisa Griff. We've got about 37 seconds left um, till the um, rooms close. So just remember, I think you were going to be muted upon re-entry back into this room, but if not, please mute yourself now that you're back into the, the main uh, meeting room in Zoom so that we don't get any feedback. And if you see I've muted you, don't worry, don't be offended. Just trying to uh, keep it quiet. All right, and breakout rooms are closing about nine seconds. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and then my co-host Lisa Griff will come back in and share her screen. So, all right, I think everyone is back in the meeting now. Yes. Hello, everyone. I hope you all had a fantastic time in your breakout rooms. Uh, Lisa G, if you want to go ahead and reshare your screen, that would be great. I had a, a slide about the Hill at Sims up and I, I, talked, I talked through the breakout room with everyone who was on the Facebook Live. So it was Lisa K show for a while. <laughs> sure. And I'm wondering, do you, do you want to uh, re-listen to the uh, presentation from the commissioner so that I, they, everyone can see him? Or do you want me to do... Um, well, it's 7.02 p.m. Oh, um, sorry. We're trying to... Yeah, we're running a little bit late, but um, I can ask Megan. Megan Palathra, do you want us to reshow the video? Maybe we can show it at the very end um, as kind of a, as after the thank you slide as a kind of a wrap up in case anybody would like to catch it one more time. I think that's perfect. Thank you so much. All right. And so Lisa G, you were in a breakout room. <laughs> So you're a facilitator. Yes. So I would love for you to report back what your group discussed. Sure. And so our group, uh, we had a couple of community members in there um, and they talked about Sharon was one of them. I don't see, she's somewhere around here, but talking about how she lives near um, Cloverland Park and walks around there. And uh, is really excited for this park to open because uh, it's an amenity that she knows about and that has been there, you know, it's been a potential for a long time and she's concerned about kind of access and um, safety. Uh, and so glad that we're looking at those things. Um, and then we had the uh, Harris County Engineering, John Blunt, who talked about uh, in the future, if we are looking at adding restrooms, they have done net zero restrooms where um, they're solar powered and they collect water and um, all those kind of things. So that's, he's gonna, we're gonna follow up with him for future amenities. So that's a couple of things that we've, we talked about. Fantastic, thank you so much for the report. Um, I would have asked the other groups to report back as, as we said, but um, we do wanna be cognizant of people's time uh, but don't worry, um, the information you gave your facilitator in your breakout room was recorded. And if not, you know, they did take copious notes. And so um, your input uh, will be reflected in our meeting uh, summaries internally, you know, for the design team to look at, um, you know, when, they're, when we're working on the rest of the project. So thanks to each and every one of you that, um, that gave your input during those breakout rooms and to the facilitators for leading those. All right. So going into the schedule. All right. So as of right now, 
Um, the, this is the initial improvement schedule for the Hill at Sims. Um, Lisa G, are you fine with me? Or would you like to do this one? Sorry. <laughs> oh, you go. Okay, all right, great. Um, so uh, we're um, expecting or estimating design to be complete in December, 2021. So not that far away. And um, we will, I mentioned this in the Facebook group, yay, that we'll have uh, two additional community meetings. So that will be July and October. Um, so if people can participate in this one, they'll have another opportunity and another one to do so. And so do you, uh, so July and October. Um, we'll go into after design, um, you know, after design is complete. Um, well, actually all the design, um, design will be permitted uh, by a quarter one of 2022. Um, we are hoping permitting can be wrapped up by then, but um, we'll keep you all posted. And so um, construction being complete in Q, quarter one of 2023. So when we say quarter one for those who are joining, it's like uh, January, February, March. And so, uh, right, that's quarter one. <laughs> yes, okay, great, quarter one of 2023. Uh, so that's when you have to look forward to the new Harris County Precinct One Park. And also um, you heard information about that fantastic, beautiful bridge that's being designed. Oh, it was gorgeous. Um, that hike and bike bridge. Uh, they were hoping a uh, design can be complete in August of 2022. Um, the project will be placed out for um, bids in November, 20, around November, 2022. With that being complete, construction being complete in, in quarter three of 2023. So if you see between the improvements at the Hill at Sims and the bridge, both in 2023, hopefully, and not too far off from each other. Um, so, but we'll keep you, of course, posted on our progress at those community meetings. And here we get to the point of how you can help. So you are already helping this evening by being in this meeting or watching the Facebook Live event. And so check. Um, but uh, we still want you to spread the word about this project. Anyone who attended this meeting is now on our email list for the Hill at Sims. And, and we're trying to build that database list, as I mentioned. Um, so definitely visit that Hill at Sims webpage. Um, and uh, you can sign up for Harris County Precinct One email blast uh, so you know what the county's up to and they can give you updates. Um, but again, anyone who attended this evening, we do have your email address to put on the list. And anyone who's joining via Facebook Live, hello please uh, put your email in the chat feature on Facebook Live. So we also know you joined there. Um, share your feedback uh, with us. Um, so we have two email addresses here that I'm sure someone's gonna put in the chat. Um, Capital projects at cp1.hctx.net and info at houstonparksboard.org. I wanted to read those out for anyone that maybe can't see the screen. And um, we have exciting little activity coming up. We're partnering Houston Parks Board and Harris County Precinct One are partnering with um, Nature Heritage Society to um, participate in their Hill at Sims Walk. So as y'all know, they do walks already at this site. There's pictures here on the screen of their fantastic walks. I've done one and I loved it. Um, so May 15th, we'll be there again um, to uh, get, your, get your input on the plan. And I know Teresa, is uh, joining us from Nature Heritage Society during the meeting. So thanks so much for being here with us, Teresa. Uh, moving forward, you know, um, I know if some people visited the site, it, you know, could use a little cleanup. So um, we're thinking about potential small group site cleanups uh, for the, um, you know, detention patient slash future park. Uh, so let us know if you're interested, um, but also share your ideas. During the breakout groups, we ask people to let us know um, other local community groups, artists, musicians, people that we can partner with in the future for um, programming and activation and activities at the park. So let us know, we can include them in our database. So when it comes time to work with them, we can just pull those right out. So that's how you can help. But again, please share your ideas um, if there are other ways you think you can help. Next slide. All right, so I'll turn it over to Megan to close us out. So really, we just wanna thank you so much for sharing your input tonight um, and being with us this evening. We look forward to further community outreach with um, you know updates on the project. As they mentioned, we'll have future community meetings in July and October. So we hope that you'll be able to join us again, um, as well as the hike on May 15th. So we look forward to seeing you in person, hopefully soon. 
And, um, you know, we will continue to provide updates on the project via our website, which is listed here at hcp1.net slash Sims trails. So please feel free to visit that website um, for updates as the project moves forward. And just finally, thank you so much um, on behalf of Precinct One for joining us tonight. And we really are excited about this project and welcome your input. So thanks again. And we can wrap up with commissioner's video um, as we kind of send off. So thanks, thanks so much. Thanks everybody. Thank you for joining us. Hi, I'm Rodney Ellis. Every Harris County resident, there's easy access to green space. It's not working, sorry. Parking, <laughs> you know, flooding and pool Technical quality. difficulties. Make us in a better yeah, I don't know. They improve community health, help build social connections, and expand environmental safeguards. Unfortunately, not all neighborhoods and communities in Harris County have the same access to quality green spaces. Precinct One is committed to enhancing green space equitably, focusing on neighborhoods that have been historically neglected. Neighborhoods like Sunnyside, where I grew up, and where Precinct One, our partners, including the Houston Parks Board, are addressing the situation by transforming the Hill and Sam's Detention Basin into a regional park destination that will include a nature preserve and much more. And we need your input by participating in this and future community meetings that are designed for you to tell us what you want in your park. Input from you and your neighbors is vitally important. So be a part of this process to make something happen in your neighborhood, to make it a neighborhood you can be proud of and you can enjoy. This is your park. We're committed to acting transparently and working together with community stakeholders to ensure that this project meets the surrounding neighborhood's goals and aspirations. The initial phase focuses on creating site connections that open public access to the park. This includes a 10 foot wide concrete shared use path around the basin and on the property frontage at Scott Street. A four foot wide nature path, parkway, gateways, water access, and improved pedestrian crossing at Scott Street. A pedestrian bridge across Sims Bayou being concurrently developed by Precinct One to help link communities safely to the park and promote active recreation and transportation. Precinct One's goal is to create more enriching community experiences, expand access to healthy recreational opportunities, open equitable economic opportunities, foster uh, environmental resiliency, and bring communities together. Thanks for participating in this community meeting and stay tuned for other things to come. Yay, so Lisa G, do you wanna unshare your screen? Everyone turn on their cameras and so I can get a screenshot of everyone in the meeting. So yeah, go ahead. Hi, Tom, nice to see you. Thanks for coming. Mr. Cave, I see you there as well. Nice blue bag with my light shining down on you right there behind you. <laughs> Again, take off your, uh, put on your camera so we can see you. And on the count of three, we can all wave. One, two, three. Thanks everyone. <laughs> Yay, perfect. All right, I got it. So I'm gonna officially end the meeting. Thank you so much everyone for joining us this evening. Um, on behalf of Harris County Precinct One and Houston Parks Board, we appreciate your time with us this evening. Stay tuned. Thank you again. Have a good rest of your night. Stay safe. Thanks, Lisa's. Thank Bye, you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Lisa, Lisa. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.